So this season gives you plenty of opportunities to live in the light. This is like one of God's best plans. Obligatory giving. <laughs> you know, it's like, if you won't think of it yourself, here's a holiday. <laughs> I gotta buy this one, this, and they're like, who cares what they want? They don't, they're never happy with anything. <laughs> and God's thinking, yes, that's exactly what I was looking at for. <laughs> You're forced to give if you won't think of it any other time. You know, Hanukkah and Christmas, you think of giving. You think of family. You may not want to be with them, but at least you're thinking of them. <laughs> you may even escape. At least you've thought of them. <laughs> There's plenty of ways to huh, test your attachments. And there's plenty of opportunity. How can I give a little love into this? How can I shed a little light here? little way. This is a great time of year and with all the crazy commercialism people trying to actually convince us that you can give a car as a Christmas gift with a bow. <laughs> <laughs> I was all this like rampant consumerism if we could lose the beauty of the season. We know that the light is returning after December 21st, right? The days start getting longer. <laughs> the light always wins <laughs> right so light is coming back mm -hmm. we know that astronomically it's coming back mm -hmm. we know that this season marks the birth of one of the great spiritual beings whether you're Christian or not doesn't matter he still was a great spiritual being Hanukkah shows this amazing miracle that God thinks it's important enough to have light, that he takes one day's worth of light and says, no, let's let it go for eight. Because light is that important. Bring light into your house. Light a candle. You know that Hindus, especially ancient Hindus, this was a big deal. The early, early the Vedic times, like 10,000 years ago, the main deity was the sun. They had lots of others, but the most important was the sun. And it, you know, it doesn't take a genius. You look up, and it's a ball of fire, isn't it? I mean, it's a ball of fire hanging in the sky. First of all, is that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> Once Gurudev was asked, "Do you believe in these yogic powers like levitation?" <laughs> he said, "Have you ever seen the planets?" <laughs> that was the whole answer. <laughs> Aren't they just like floating up there? <laughs> so anyway, we have this giant ball of fire in the sky. And, and they knew that in a very deep way that without that ball of fire, there's no life. Simple, right? So one of the main rituals, and it happens to this day, by the way, every house has to have a flame constantly burning. Because that flame was a piece of that. It wasn't like a... If you put a painting of Jesus or Mary or Buddha in your house, it's a painting. This is a piece of a God. Do you know what I'm saying? It's fire. Fire here and have fire on my table. The most sacred duty for a Hindu was to keep that fire always going. Every day they would tend to the fire, put oil in the lamp to keep it burning. And if you have a fire burning in your house, it transforms energy, right? It's taking in oxygen. It's giving out warmth and light. It's a little locus of energy. So we have a dark season. We should bring light in. It's a wonderful thing that people put out Christmas lights in their houses. They should leave them up until March. I don't know why they, you know, it's, doesn't it? Don't you notice it, like, you know, around January 2nd, 3rd, when most people... It gets cold and dark. It's unnatural. We should be putting light in. Light in our own lives and our actions and thoughts. But also physically, if you want to feel better, put some light around. Light a few candles. Better to light a candle than curse the darkness, right? So put up lights. You don't have to be into Christmas or anything. Just put lights around. Light up things. <laughs>